Today, I wanna to look at thermal paste spread because this debate, it never seems to die. So what I'm gonna do for just a little bit of evidence and personal curiosity, I wanted to look at what the thermal paste actually looks like underneath the cooler, or in this case, an acrylic picture frame. Now, this won't be a perfect representation of a cooler. It doesn't have those grooves of a copper heat exchanger or those odd channels on the Wraith Prism cooler, but it'll at least give us an idea of what's going on underneath there when you can't actually see what the spread looks like. So what I'm going to do is apply the thermal paste in a multitude of methods, all of which were included in my best way to apply thermal paste video, where I tested common methods in their temperature differences. And for fun, I've added a bunch of suggestions from you beautiful people. First up is the classic P method using a decent amount of Arctic MX4. With one half of the acrylic sheet, I did my best to apply even pressure, though sometimes imperfectly. In this case, we can see the paste spread pretty evenly, almost covering the entirety of the IHS. This is not bad at all. Obviously, it's not perfect. When you put your cooler down, you're not gonna know what it actually looks like underneath there. So I decided just to do all of these in a one pass. Next is the rice grain. I put a rather small amount. It covers less than the P method, but still not bad coverage. And now we have the line. No, that line is a bit too chunky. Let's try that again. And we run out of the first tube of thermal paste. Okay, that's worse, but we're gonna go with that. Not bad coverage, and I think this highlights the value of a steady hand, which I am clearly lacking. Next is the X. This is the first one that covers pretty well the entire IHS. I like that. Now for the pentadot. This is the first one I might be worried about air getting stuck under there, but as we can see, it has great coverage, almost identical to the X. And I really like that. And now for the famous buttered toast spread method. I used a plastic card to get a decent spread. Not a bad job, but as I apply pressure on the CPU, we can see here an air pocket form in the center. Now it eventually disappears, but where did it go? Did it escape or is it just lingering in there? It's hard to tell. I have no idea if that bubble's actually gone, but who knows? And the coverage otherwise is great, obviously. I mean, you spread this over the entire IHS, it better be good, right? I mean, except for that little tiny spot in the bottom. So overall, I think the spread method is, is good, right? But it comes with that little issue of possibly getting the air gaps trapped in there, which leads to a suggestion we have from Alien Kitten, but we'll get to that later in this video. Our final standard is the tiny dot to see what it looks like when you apply too little thermal paste. No surprise, it leaves us with a small circle, which is going to be fine, I guess. We already found out you don't need thermal paste at all, so it will survive, but you're not gonna get the best temperatures. Now to our first suggestion. This one was from Pluto Zero G, and that is to draw a smiley face. Not bad, but air bubbles might be a problem as we see the paste close around that dry spot in the middle. Kevin Harvey says he does a percent sign and it's a quote, foolproof way to get good results. Now I'm not an expert here, but what I did here looks more like a failed X, but either way, this is definitely an acceptable application method in my opinion. Avram Stern suggests the lack of a spiral is a shame, so let's give it a go. Now the final spread here looks great, but it looks like a bubbles paradise. And until we figure out where those bubbles actually go, I'd steer clear of the spiral. Extinct Turtle says, do an infinity symbol, lol. And that's good enough. Much like the spiral, 
Good spread, but, you know, bubbles. Sparknot thinks we should try a square for funsies. I don't think the shape I made has a name, but whatever it is, it spreads pretty well. And finally, the one I referenced earlier from Alien Kitten, which is to spread a thin layer over the IHS and then add a small dot to prevent the air bubble issue. Let's give it a try. And there goes the second tube of MX4. The spread. The dot. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. This is definitely better than just buttering the toast. Once you butter the toast, you gotta put a little dollop of jam on there. And I know that makes me sound like an old man, but I like it, so don't bother me. But yeah, this is good. This is one of the best ones, maybe even the best. It still looks like it can get bubbles in there, but it's definitely better than doing it without the extra dot. Personally though, after seeing all these results, I'll probably be going with the X method because it's great spread. There's no real worries about air bubbles. I mean, all that said, like we know this doesn't really make a difference anyways. Let's remember that, like it, it doesn't really matter. If you haven't seen it, go watch that video I made about this. But before I commit to the X method, for one last time, I'm going to use the P method with some Arctic Silver to discover if it really needs to break in. Do you really need break in time? If you wanna see that video, subscribe and please leave a like. This has been Tech Literate. My name is Nick, thank you for watching. Marker, let's go. And for fun, I've included a bunch of suggestions from some of you beautiful people. <coughs> God, I'm getting hot in here.